Welcome to the Think Fitness Life Podcast, your one-stop shop for exploring the connections between fitness, health, and overall well-being. Join us as we dive deep into all aspects of a balanced and vibrant life, from pushing your limits in the gym to finding peace of mind outside of it. Whether you're a seasoned athlete or just starting your journey, you are in the right place to discover the knowledge and insight to perfect your fitness life. I believe we are in a crisis of self-care in which the demands of our modern schedules and mixed messages from social media create a culture in which it feels like we can never win. All right, welcome back to the Think Fitness Life podcast. And that was an excerpt from Dr. Shivani Gupta's website. She is a doctor of Ayurveda and modernizing it into this new world of our high-paced high living society to treat our many health issues that we have going on. And we are lucky to have her on the podcast today to dive into what she believes is the path to health and how you can add tools to your toolbox to incorporate her thoughts, her beliefs, her practices into your own health and lifestyle to enhance your health, and to overall bring longevity to your life. So doctor, what is your background? What is your thought process? What are your teachings to allow humans to live optimally? I teach about Ayurveda and the importance of Ayurveda for our health, for our well-being and all of that. So I love just sharing that Ayurveda exists. And then I built my turmeric supplement company about 10 years ago. And so I love sharing about the power of turmeric for our health, for recovery, muscle recovery, wellness, longevity. And then we can also offer a discount code to your audience if you'd like. Awesome. Let's dive into that. Cool. Because I'd I'd never heard of, how do you say that first word? Ayurveda. You can say Ayurveda. Couldn't (laughs) pronounce it, but I was like, oh, this is interesting. I've never heard of something like this before. Yeah. Think, would you like to make your code think life fitness? Does that work? That works. Perfect. Easy. I'll give that to my team. So dive into it. Like what got you started on this path of where you are today? Like what got you interested in treating the body differently than other people do? Well, I grew up in Houston, Texas, and I grew up to this family that always had health issues. So my parents were successful entrepreneurs. We'd go to India every year to see my family, my cousins, my grandparents. But every time someone would suffer from something really catastrophic with their health. And I kept watching this and thinking, well, why are we working so hard for success? If at the end of success, you have horrible health issues and you're at the hospital and dealing with doctors for like the whole last 20 years of your life. That's kind of insanity. I don't understand what's happening because I saw quadruple bypasses, strokes, Parkinson's, a lot of diabetes in my family. I thought, okay, well, I'm going to have to find a different way of being if this is my health destiny unfolding in front of me. And so when I discovered Ayurveda and yoga, I was like, oh, okay. And then fitness and health. So I've been working out with trainers since high school through college. And since then, so probably almost 30 years of my life at this point, because my mom was always diabetic, overweight, and really needing to train and lift to build health. And that just exposed me to, we can either do the work and feel awesome and be so healthy and vibrant, or we cannot do the work. And then the price is really large. And so I discovered Ayurveda in India, which had existed for 5,000 years. And I was like, this is it. This is the system. It works for me. I need to share this with the world. And what, when you discovered it, what were what were you looking for? Or did this just kind of stumble upon your door and you're like, Hey, this, this is putting the pieces together. Cause I believe sometimes even in my career, some of this stuff, you don't search for it, but it just kind of finds you. And then you connect you. You're like, Oh, here are the puzzle pieces. 
Yeah. Well, growing up, I would go to India and every time I'd get so sick and we'd end up at the doctor's office and they would give me really strong antibiotics. I'd get better, but then I'd have stomach aches after. And so my parents started looking for alternatives. We went to homeopathic doctors and different things. But whenever I traveled through India, I kept seeing each hotel and each city talking about something called Ayurveda. And I was like, if this thing called Ayurveda exists, what is it? What is it about? And so it came, it really hit me in the face in college because I was so sick. I basically had leaky gut. I had this immune system that didn't defend me at all. And I kept thinking, what am I going to do? Like, I need a different way. And all of a sudden I was in India and I saw this, this center for Ayurveda where you could go and detox and get healed. And so I told my parents, that's it. Like, we have to try a different way. I have been sick for far too long and nothing is working. And so when we went there, they immediately knew. They were like, oh my gosh, this is your mind-body constitution. You need some gut healing. Here's our protocol. And I learned a new way of living and being. And I, I just... I loved it so much. And I realized here in the West, we're not always taught how to live a preventive lifestyle. We just live this fast paced life, consuming and consuming and rarely pausing to say, what am I doing here? And is this actually good for me? Or do I need to build a different way of life to have a different level of health? Everything's so reactive here in the Western culture. So we'll kind of go into that. A lot of people always have this question on leaky gut. And I know it's a big problem nowadays in society with the foods we eat. Go, let's go into that a little bit of how this Ayurveda, is that? Yeah. How that can help someone with leaky gut. Because, um, I mean, I've had issues. I don't know if it's been viral or leaky gut issues, but stuff, or that might be, you know, coincided or help someone who does have a sickness help to heal their gut and really what leaky gut is for people who might not have heard it because believe it or not some people this might be episode number one for them that they've ever listened to about leaky gut so dive into that realm of things and then we'll expand outwards because i think this is the perfect place to start because we've all we you and i know if you start with a gut you can really influence the rest of the system Exactly, exactly. So what's cool is Ayurveda is an entire system of health, healing and medicine from India that's 5,000 years old. And its entire ethos, like the entire system is predicated on the idea that the gut is the center of everything and the gut is the center of all health. So I love Ayurveda because it's a lifestyle. We teach about the circadian rhythm. We teach about your dosha or your individual mind-body constitution. We teach a lot about the herbs and spices that can transform your health. We teach about an Ayurvedic diet that's nourishing and wholesome and keeps you vibrant, not one that's so um, narrow that it's not necessarily supporting your health. We teach a lot about self-care and detoxification. So there's a lot under the umbrella of Ayurveda, mm -hmm. but one big key piece is that gut health is everything. So we teach that there's something called the gut digestive fire, and it's like a campfire that exists inside of you. That's your metabolism. That's the strength of your digestion and how it's going to support you. And so what's interesting is here in the West and, and probably in most of the world at this point, so many of us, when we get sick, have gone to the doctor, at least when I grew up, you go to the pediatrician and they'd say, here's your prescription for your antibiotics. Your mm -hmm. cold will get better. And so I probably took antibiotics 50 times just in elementary, middle and high school for how sick I was, not realizing that there was a gut digestive system, a microbiome that was being damaged by the antibiotics. And back then they didn't recommend probiotics. That was not part of the conversation. And so here I was finally fast forward to college before I understood, hey, my gut is tied to my immune system. I've got to manage this whole thing in a new way. And so leaky gut is really gut intestinal permeability. And I've studied it under so many great practitioners and, and I have friends who own probiotic companies now, so I learned from them. But that gut lining is just one cell wall thick. Like that's one cell thick. It's there to let the good stuff through and it's supposed to block the bad stuff from getting out into our bloodstream like large food product particles or pesticides or anything that comes through our system that our body has to process and digest. If it's large and it's not meant to get through, but it does, all of a sudden your whole system is going to react. So a lot of times right now when we talk about autoimmune conditions, what does autoimmune mean? It means the 
your own body is reacting to something inside of itself and attacking itself. But maybe the body's not attacking itself. Maybe it's attacking the foreign stuff that's getting out and all over the place. Um, and so leaky gut, to me, from the Ayurvedic perspective, is just an understanding that, hey, we all damage our gut linings, especially nowadays with heavy metals, toxins, pesticides, stress, antibiotics, um, foods that are not real foods. We're eating a lot of foods that are highly processed that the body's not going to receive as food. It's just going to damage all the way through seed oils, inflammatory foods, things like that. So there's a whole lot of things we're doing to damage the gut. And then there's not enough things that we're doing to love the gut and fix the gut. And so from the Ayurvedic perspective, we teach how to eat, when to eat, how to eat ghee and different foods that'll repair the gut lining, like how to bring in so much gut healing and love that the gut will repair, repair itself. And then we're whole and healthy and we can move forward. And gut health is honestly an ongoing thing. I, I always think like, I've done so good. I've healed my gut. I'm great. And then I'm like, you know, this is like an, an <laughs> annual, biannual project, right? You can't just, it, it, it's not one and done, unfortunately. Yeah. You, you want it to be what you just said it was like, Hey, we're, we locked this in. We're good to go. But there's, there's so many environmental factors that play a role into this. And it is un unfortunate. And I, it's hard to knock because the antibiotics work, right? I they was do. on them a lot as a kid. I was sick. I had things, but then you realize, hey, it, just, it absolutely wipes out your gut flora. Like that's just hard to hear. But that's what you know. Sitting down with people like you to have people who get sick and hey, your doctor is going to put you on antibiotics, but you have to come out on the other side of things and do the right things to to build your gut back. Because it was funny. Well, I wouldn't say it was funny. But my brother had an instance, this is years ago, where he had surgery and was on antibiotics and medication and then got C. diff. And I was just like, like they just tell you, I wasn't into what I was into now. This is when we were younger. You know, oh, this just happens yeah. and you can pick it up. But then I, as you read further, it's like, oh, no, you just wipe out so much that your system really doesn't have an immune response and it can just get attacked by whatever. Correct. And then over time, we also know the importance now of probiotics, rebuilding the gut, rebuilding the gut in such a way that we're using prebiotics, we're using probiotics. Um, and also, it's so important to understand that these things are going to come along, like you just said, we're going to take antibiotics. It, uh -huh. It's going to be part of our lives. They're very effective. But when I go to take an antibiotic, I'm like, okay, at least you did the work all year long to have a great gut so that now this is going to happen. And you know you have to just bring your microbiome back and you have great supplements that are high quality that are going to get you there. So I think it's just so important to be aware so that we have the toolkit ready to deal with it. Now for the, the you said prebiotics and probiotics, do you have any certain strands or certain ones that you like to use other than the other? And, I, and I've always, I've heard of like different bacteria strands, different strands of probiotics. And I'm always interested to hear what different people like to use to help heal the gut. And then I'm obviously interested to see for someone like myself to try to see, okay, if I take this versus this, because anyone can go to the store and buy a probiotic or prebiotic, but they never understand like what's actually in it, what strands of bacteria, and that's good bacteria to build the gut flora. So I don't want people to think it's bad. Yeah. What strands do you like to use or, or what supplements do you combine together to make a powerful? Sure. It's such a great question. I, <laughs> yeah. have, I have loved and studied supplements for decades because as a girl who just didn't have an immune system, I had to experiment and keep trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. And I would say for decades, a lot of things didn't work. It took me finishing my master's in Ayurvedic sciences, my PhD in turmeric, I launched my own supplement company. Then I went to the functional medicine conferences, became friends with hundreds of functional medicine doctors who started recommending my products. And then I had the honor of like hanging out with them for hours, hours per year. And then I came to understand this company's better. They see that one move the results in the stool test. This one has improved people's blood work and everything. So it's just been an interesting journey where I had to get a PhD on what actually works. What I find fascinating about the supplement world is it's so unregulated. And I think it was New York Times or Wall Street Journal that walked into big box retailers over a decade ago 
picked products off the shelf, tested them, and saw that over 75% of them didn't have the active ingredients in there to the level stated. And I remember reading that and I was just devastated because I was like, you know, a lot of us are obsessed with our health. Mm -hmm. I go to the gym, I lift, I've done that for decades. Like I put so much time, blood, sweat, and effort into this body being healthy. And if I'm buying something like, for example, vitamin D, I really need the vitamin D to have everything that I'm taking. I'm trusting it to do the job. And I still think about that sometimes. Like when I'm traveling and I'm taking D, I'm leaning on that D to be the full 5,000 that I am paying for. Uh Um, So about a decade ago, when I built my supplement company, I was like, let me go and research what it takes to build a high quality, potent supplement. And it's definitely more expensive. You can buy supplements that are made in China, that are made abroad or that are US made. And so what I've done lately is I have great founders, great mentors now. One of them is Karan Krishnan of Microbiome Labs. Have you heard of that company? I have not. Okay. So they make a probiotic called Mega Sporbiotic. And I started taking that product probably five years ago. And it's a practitioner level line. I'm now a practitioner of the line because I'm so Mm -hmm. obsessed. And when pandemic started, I called them and I said, listen, there's only one way I'm going to save my family turmeric and probiotics. So I need some cases. And they were like, you're so funny. I was like, no, I'm, I'm being honest. How else do you prevent sickness? You heal the gut and you reduce inflammation. Like at a minimum, that and some D, that's like the basics. And then you'd build on top from there on your immune supplementation. Um, and they laughed and they I ordered some cases. And I really do think that if you take a probiotic that's full of diverse bacteria, there's a spore-based And so they have a lot of published science on why that spore-based formula works so well in the body, how it adjusts to building your microbiome in the way that your body needs. So I find it fascinating. I'm not the owner of a probiotic supplement company, but I'm fascinated by using their product line and I explore it. I take one one month. I'll take a different one for different strains a different month just to ensure that over time I'm building diversity in the gut microbiome. Now, I just want to circle back to what you said about, I believe it was the pandemic and you said what you take. And I've heard this before, but I've only heard it once. Why did you supplement turmeric with vitamin D and the other things? So my whole PhD was on turmeric and I'm Mm -hmm. obsessed with turmeric. I think turmeric is the number one polyphenol and plant we all need to take. Um, But I also respect that probiotics do such a potent job that if you're not going to build gut diversity, gut microbiome, you're pretty much screwed. So I was like, probiotic, let's hold that gut together. The gut is the immune system. Then I was like, vitamin D, we know we're so deficient. So the options were either get outside a whole lot or start supplementing with D and bump the D levels up. But to me, I utilize turmeric first always because turmeric is anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. It's also neoplastic. So like it is anti-cancer in the body, anti-diabetes, anti-obesity. It's very anti-aging because of how it affects different pathways when it comes to our sirtuins, AMPK pathways, telomeres and things like that. So I get to speak at so many medical conferences right now, like orthopedic neurology conferences, anti-aging conferences on the power of using turmeric in clinical settings as an adjunct solution for any issue when it comes to inflammation. And what's cool is the British Medical Journal, you've gotten me started, I get so excited. The British, go, Medical, go. <laughs> the British Medical Journal just published a study last year that said that curcumin is as effective as PPIs, which means all of GI medicine can use it. We know that it's as effective as, um, I'm not gonna name the brands, but as effective as NSAIDs. So mm-hmm. orthopedics can use it, rheumatology can use it. So. For the last decade, my work has been, okay, let me create something so that every doctor can say, all right, you're in pain. I'm going to prescribe you this or recommend you this because we know it works. But I'm also going to give you a natural solution as an adjunct. And you can come off that stuff sooner if you'd like, because the natural solution can be as effective. So that's where in the supplement world, I think it's so cool that we're now able to put a lot of science behind the ingredients, how we develop the ingredients, how we produce things. We test things for safety, efficacy, and potency now, which is great. We have the truth about what's in there. And then we know the results we deliver because we're studying that as well. 
And and the reason I asked about the pandemic is I do ha- I did have a coach years ago, or during the time talk about turmeric, and you probably answered this. And he said it was an it's an ionophore, so it helps pull other mm-hmm. nutrients into the cell. And I'm listening like okay, wow. And, and he's even talking similar to what you said about hey, you pair this with other supplements or medication, and it can help draw stuff into the cell. So sure. when you said hey during the pandemic, this is what I did. It like, okay, light bulb went off for me because you hear that. It's like, we understand what supplements can do, but there's these compounds that really can just pull things into the cell. Probably more effective than, I hate to say it, some big pharma medications can. Just because it's whole and it's from the earth and it's just, it's not a synthetic drug. Let's Correct. put it that way. <laughs> it's natural. It's a polyphenol. It's from mad. It's from the plant kingdom. Mm-hmm. Our body knows how to receive it. Our body knows how to absorb it. It knows how to use it. And again, going back to the beginning, I have had a life where I've always been so sick. And so I just was always looking for like, what do I do so that I'm constantly defended as my system? And when the pandemic started, I literally thought I am the most screwed person on earth. Like this is going to go so badly. And I have a whole family in South Florida, all in medicine. So they have a totally different attitude. They were like walking in in their scrubs. They were operating on patients who were infected and sick. And I was like, oh gosh. And I literally took turmeric, probiotic and D and I'm, I'm a very lucky girl. I never got it, never went down with it, took care of so many people who did. Um, and a lot of people would call me and they're like, what are you doing? Like, Tell me exactly what you're doing. I'm like, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. They'd come to my house sick in their cars and I'd hand them a doggy bag of supplements. And they were like, thank you. I just needed to order your stuff. And I needed to know what else's company you actually take. Because I think we're kind of in a world right now where we have to talk to each other and share what actually works so that we can get the results we want. Because it's hard to figure that out online. And I think that was one of the big things during that pandemic that unfortunately a lot of people did not listen to let's say us us health experts you're more than i am but i was always hey make sure you're dosing supplements correctly and dosing them right not just the minimal doses but the the optimal doses and make sure you're getting everything on the table and i i and my family do you know higher vitamin d levels with k than you know, the regular recommended 2000. And it, it's something I still swear by. I mean, not just the pandemic, but even every day just to build an immune system, but kind of want to dive into really, um, turmeric because we're on the topic and there's a lot of places we can go here. Yeah. But first off, just what got you interested in, in that, like one specific substance, I say, let's break, break it down first. Like what is turmeric? How can people get it? And and what it's like made up of because people hear curcumin and then they hear turmeric and they're like, Oh, wait a second. Are they two separate things? Sure. So I was sitting in herbology class in my master's class and we had studied Ayurveda and I was like, Ayurveda is awesome. The problem is it's just a little complex. Like, it's a lot of work to do everything that I teach. And I always get that people are like, how much time do you have Shivani? And I'm like, I just break down the work in chunks and habit stack the best I can. But we were sitting there and they talked about cumin seeds coriander, which is just the cilantro seeds, uh, red chili powder. These are all spices we use in the Indian kitchen. And mm-hmm. then when they got to turmeric, I was like, wait a minute. Everything you've just said is every spice that's an Indian spice, fennel even, that we use, um, they're anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. And isn't that the benefit that we're all seeking when we buy superfoods? Like when we buy goji berries and cacao and all these things, we're seeking an anti-inflammatory benefit. And my family history is diabetes. And I was like, wait, you're telling me this one spice is that anti-inflammatory? And so I went deeper with it. And my advisor was like, I need you to pick a PhD topic that you're passionate about. And I was like, well, if turmeric can be the one spice, it's like turmeric and moringa are kind of both in that category of spices or plants that are so well received by so many genes. And I know turmeric is so well received by so many genes in the body. It can do so much because of the pathways that it connects to. Turmeric is a rhizome. It's a sister to the ginger plant. It grows in the earth. It is um, just like ginger we use so ubiquitously for nausea and for gut digestive support. 
turmeric is just the sister plant that has all of its own potent benefits. And what people don't realize is out of the entire turmeric plant, which a lot of people buy fresh turmeric and they use that in their smoothies and juicing, a lot of people take that fresh turmeric and dry it into the spice. So when we buy the spice, it's much more concentrated than the fresh version. So I like using the spice. I use it regularly in my home. But then when it comes to that spice, only 3% of it is the curcuminoids. And those curcuminoids are what we've studied. And we know that that extract from turmeric is the most effective part to reduce inflammation. And out of those curcuminoids, people play a lot of games. So the three curcuminoids, the one curcumin is the most effective at reducing inflammation. And very rarely on a supplement will someone show you the proportions they used, the way they processed it. So a lot of the games are played just in the curcuminoids area of the turmeric. And I see a lot of supplements on the market where they're like, it's turmeric powder, 1500 milligrams. And I'm like, guys, I could have put a pinch of turmeric in my food. I didn't need <laughs> you to put that in a veggie cap for me to take. Like, that's so ridiculous. Um, but there's a lot of arguments around non-curcuminoid turmeric being beneficial. So when I built my formula, I put regular turmeric in with the curcuminoids for the synergistic effect of putting those two things back together. Um, but it's just so fascinating to me how much curcumin is absorbed by the body. And I'm talking to a lot of scientists who I'm working with at different universities now about why is it that so many genes receive curcumin and then use it. So to me, curcumin is just the most potent polyphenol extract that we can use across all systems and subspecialties of medicine when we're told we're inflamed. And everything that the doctor typically tells you is you have somethingitis, you have arthritis, bursitis, gastritis, um, Alzheimer's, diabetes, heart disease, like name anything, it's based in inflammation. And so my point to everyone is, let's start reducing the systemic inflammation, that chronic low grade persistent inflammation that's working like wildfire and damaging all of us. Just like you know your vitamin D is low, I know you can't see the inflammation, but it's there and it's wreaking havoc. And a lot of people tell me, you know, I'm aging, this sucks. Like I'm, a, I'm 43 right now. And all my friends are like, this all sucks. I don't like it. I'm like, guys, aging is a choice. This is called inflammaging. Just choose differently with your diet, with your lifestyle and get anti-inflammatory support on board, get the gut microbiome healthy, and then we're going to win at the whole picture. And it is very simple because all you really have to do is use it when cooking. True. You can. And what I've, I've read for years, and this is why I'm interested to ask that you have to use it with black pepper to Correct. make it more bio bioavailable. And I think a lot of people miss the boat on that yeah. and they just use it in I don't, I don't know Indian culture and I'm going to guess that they've been mixing some sort of, whether it's, it doesn't have to be black pepper. What is it? Pepper, pepperine or pepperine, yes. pepperine. something in their food has that, that mixes well and creates that same effect. Can yeah. you dive into that? So people who are maybe going to the store and I'm, I assume it's in supplements. I think I usually just do it from the store, the spice, but you really need to mix it with black pepper. Sure. So when you go to the store and you buy turmeric as a spice, whenever you cook with it or use it, add a healthy fat or black pepper. Has to be one of the two. Okay. Curcumin, is, curcumin or turmeric is not that bioavailable to the body. So it's interesting because in Indian cooking, when we have our little spice box, mm -hmm. one of our spices is called garam masala. And that spice has black pepper in it. And you're not going to cook without it. So you're always going to get black pepper in the cooking. You're always going to absorb that turmeric. The thing is, I think that nowadays, regular turmeric, the spice is not enough. I wish it was because I eat Indian food. I wish it was enough. But in this day and age where we have so much of a toxic burden, we have so many stressors, we have pesticides, the food is lacking minerals, um, our diet is not that anti-inflammatory or nourishing, I think that we need to have a more therapeutic dose of supplementation and superfood on board to even maintain decent health. Because for me, I'm constantly going to functional medicine and I'm like, guys, I still don't feel great. And they're like, Shivani, you're doing pretty much everything right, but we need you to even get better in your diet. I already exercise, yoga, do stool tests, figure out what's wrong, hormone balance, watch my blood work. And even then, even focusing so much on food, I have so many deficiencies. And so imagine you're like a car 
with the gasoline tank running on empty a lot of the time, that's going to affect everything. And our systemic inflammation that most of us carry is the problem. So I still think therapeutic curcumin matters, just like taking vitamin D at the right dosage matters. If you were getting a cold, you wouldn't eat an orange. You would take a vitamin C supplement to do the job. But I also want everyone to still use turmeric the spice because it still is going to have benefits being in your food. And so for, for I, I 100% agree because it is like it is dependent on the dosage. And I think a lot of people just like, oh, I sprinkled this on. I got something. And I was like that at one point. I mean, I would cook chicken with turmeric on it and be like, hey, this is great. I'm getting the benefit. But then to realize, hey, you read research, you probably need a higher dose. Correct. What would your recommendation of dosage be or in your supplements, what are your dosage per pill? So our, and the way I built turmeric gold, my main formula is 500 milligrams of curcumin per capsule in the correct proportion, in the correct potency. So a lot of curcumin supplements out there will not tell you the potency. And we make sure that we order one at a 95% grade potency, but the supplier I work with lands above that. We normally land at almost 98%. And I think that's why we get such a powerful result. That's why orthopedics is using us and different medical specialties. What I found interesting is it takes almost like a mason jar of regular turmeric powder to give you what's in a two week supply of the supplements. So I measured it once with my PhD mentor and I was like, I need to explain it visually. So even my brain gets it. So mm. in two weeks, would you eat a mason jar of turmeric powder? Typically, no. Even in I, my could, tr I could try, but I don't think I'd be... Yeah. too happy with what my food is. Yeah. It doesn't taste good. So in my house, right. I buy three pound bags of turmeric. We're cooking a lot of Indian food, mm -hmm. but we still don't use that much in right. two weeks. So that's where dosage and potency comes in. And I'm, I'm very glad you explained like that. So people get an idea of it's not just a simple whole, oh, Hey, I sprinkled something on, or I did a little bit of this. It really comes down to, are you getting the right dose? And I think that goes for probiotics, prebiotics. Yeah. It goes for anything. Just if you're that person who's questioning, hey, why isn't this going right? Look at that dosage. Where where can you take it up maybe a little bit more to get the benefits from it? Sure. And, and with that, this is a question more geared towards first guys. Then I want to get into the female side of it. But I've always read in my research that turmeric increases testosterone. Right. And and then over the years, I think there was a, couple, a one or two studies came out and then said it inhibits it. Hmm. So I don't have it up now. I can send it to you at, at later date, but it, this always would go back and forth because I would love to use turmeric or drink like turmeric teas and all this stuff, but dive into kind of what it does. Cause is it, I believe it is an aro aromatase inhibitor. Yeah, you're right. I just looked it up real quick. When you said it, some suggest that turmeric supplementation may increase testosterone levels in males, but they've yielded mixed results. Mm-hmm. Looking for personalized workout plans? Whether you prefer to train at home or hit the gym, try a 14-day free trial of the Think Fitness Life mobile app. Get customized workouts, nutrition guidance, and coaching from a qualified professional who will be in your corner every step of the way. Visit www.thinkfitnesslife.com to start your free trial today. That's www.thinkfitnesslife.com. Interesting. I, I hate it when there's like a mixed result. I'll just give yeah. me the clear answer. Um, it's interesting. I know from anecdotal evidence, because I, I talked to so many people, it helps them with muscle recovery after their workouts. So I have some guys who tell me, look, I take it. And then the next day I can lift and I'm not sore and I have no pain. Um, when it comes to hormones, I, I, I don't have clarity on that. But one way to think about it is we know that curcumin has a positive effect on the gut microbiome. We know that it helps heal and support the gut microbiome. And we know that our hormone levels are tied to our gut health. Gut impacts hormone. And so sometimes when I'm thinking like, okay, you know, as women, we're going to go through perimenopause, menopause. How do I support a woman through her decades? The more we support gut, the more we reduce inflammation, the more the body can put itself in its most ideal homeostasis and thus get itself to its ideal levels. But on testosterone specifically, I don't have an answer. I was always curious because there's always been a back and forth on that. And it's, I don't, I'm not going to say, I wouldn't sit here and say it's like, oh, it's negative because yeah. there's so many 
benefits that outweigh that, hey, maybe it's a little bit increased, but are you doing all the right other things too? And I think that's also a caveat. It's like, it's this isn't a soul just, hey, if I take this, it's going to increase this. You have to be doing everything else right. And and what you said about the gut is, is so spot on because and I have a lot of athletes and clients that they'll be like, oh, I'm taking this, this, this supplement. And I'm like, okay, what are you eating? And it's all like garbage, high inflammatory food, and they're not seeing results. It's like, well, you're just wasting this because you're, the gut's not doing anything. Correct. And and that's not even to mention sleep as well. So I, I built my supplement company and then in pandemic, I realized everyone was taking my pill for a problem and I didn't realize it, that they were just using it like an NSAID, like, oh, I'm in pain. I just take her turmeric. I'm great. And I said, wait, wait a minute, guys, we have to have a whole conversation around exercise, sleep, anti-inflammatory diet, nutrient density, nutrient variety. Because if you're not doing the whole picture, you're you're just neutralizing. You're mm-hmm. eating garbage. You're taking the turmeric so you're okay. But we're never going to get like a long-term improvement. And then you're going to be reliant on a supplement. You should be able to come off it. And when it comes to testosterone, I self-test all the time. So I do high-dose turmeric higher than probably most people, but I'm constantly watching my blood work to see, okay, well, I tried that supplement. Did it move my D or did it not? I tried that guy's probiotic. Did it heal my gut? Did it not? So I love that we have so much access now to testing and we can see what it does. And, And speaking of that, what test do you like to do? I know you did mention it earlier when you're talking about your functional metal medicine kind of stint there. What do you look for in tests and what tests do you do? I I'm kind of uh, over into data and I'm on my <laughs> third functional medicine doctor. So now when I get to a new one, they kind of laugh because they get this binder of files. And, and so I, what I've learned since pandemic is I need to like chill out a bit about my health. Cause you can get too into your own data And I think we we really ever chill out about our health. This is our job. We're like, we nerd out about like every single level. I go in for blood work. I'm like, can I see this, this, and this? They're like, why? I'm like, cause I want to. (laughs) Exactly. I want to see everything. So I get Uh like 10 pages of blood work. I know a little too much about my blood and I like getting that biannual cause I want to see, did something move? And if it didn't, what am I not doing? Um, I think an annual stool test or at least every other year stool test is so important because you never know when you're creating pathology and gut dysbiosis. Sometimes in some years I'm so stressed out, I will cause dysbiosis. And my doctor has to say to me, can we please prebiotic foods and calm down and heal this? And then we're good for a while until we Mm -hmm. do something else that causes that. Then hormone testing. I think a lot of us have no baseline data on ourselves. I went to the functional medicine doctor because I said, I think I'm high estrogen. I'm creating fibroids. I think I have estrogen dominance. We have to fix this. I don't want fibroid surgery many times in my lifetime. And so we discovered I have zero progesterone, postmenopausal progesterone at age 40. So then that gives you the opportunity to start balancing that, start fixing that over your decades. And then I think you can have even more fun because you can do food intolerance testing, know what foods really trigger and inflame you. You can do heavy metal testing with your hair. There's a lot of testing. You can do mold testing. Um, But I think it's good if every maybe four or five years, because it gets kind of unaffordable to do all the testing. If every maybe half decade you sat down and just did it all and got really big snapshots on yourself, then you'd get the answers you need before you manifest really horrible diseases. The problem is as a society, we're running around so inflamed, not realizing that all the complaints we have around our health could not all of it, but most of it could be seen in data and we could be addressing it way earlier on. Like I know I'm deficient in D I know I'm deficient in B a omega three. Like I have a long list of what I am deficient in, So I have the opportunity every day to fix that through my food and supplements so that for further down the line, I don't have to pay a price for all those deficiencies. And I do think it's one thing that is unfortunate that Western medicine, and I actually don't know about even in Europe, what it doesn't do is all these tests and you don't, and you're not going to get that. So if someone's listening, don't expect to go to your regular doctor and them to rattle off all these tests. It's almost like you... And I tell this to clients, you have to pry them almost yeah. to get down this road. And, and then if not, you go to these functional medicine 
doctors or what some companies are doing now, I've talked to some is they're creating at home tests Correct. that you can start seeing all this data come through and right. you can do this without having to schedule an appointment. And I think that's very beneficial because it can give you the, or the, or the person really an insight of, Hey, what's going on? Because like you said, we do change very rapidly yeah. and it's all about preventing, not being reactive to. And I, this is, this is where I always say the supplement world is, is prominent because yeah. I love supplements and years ago, and I'm sure you probably got this. They were like, Oh, you have to do, I get it whole foods first and square that away. But they would be like, Oh, you really, people would be, you don't need supplements. You right. don't really need them. They're kind of a waste of money. And this is, I mean, this is years and years ago. Now you see it's more like, hey, people are going here to this supplement, here for this. It's almost you're getting better quality than what you can actually get at a just a supermarket or a store. Yeah, the thing is, our food is mineral deficient. Our soil is lacking. Mega corporations are making our food food. There's no regard for quality. I just got back from a trip to Europe and I ate everything there. I could eat the bread, the gluten, everything. And I felt fine. And I was like, wow, in America, I can't eat half of anything without feeling sick or ill. So it's just one of those things where supplements have to be in place because our food quality sucks. It's just part of the game and are part of the current stat, state of affairs until we revolutionize that, which I think is a revolution a lot of us are getting into. And then secondly, it's not part of the Western medical model, insurance-based model to test all that. I have so many friends who are like, okay, Shwani, I know you're crazy. Just give me the list. I'll tell my doctor to do it. And when they go, the doctors <laughs> are like, you don't need any of that. And the doctors can't order 50 things that are outside the scope of what they normally do. They're going to get in trouble. It's just not part of what they're supposed to do or allowed to do or whatever their constraints are. So sometimes you really do have to go find a great integrative medicine doctor, functional medicine doctor. Sometimes chiropractors do this kind of work. Um, or you can find an at-home test, but sometimes you need someone to interpret it. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I need someone to say, you know, the reason, Shivani, you're running 5, 10, 15 deficiencies is gut dysbiosis and look at the stool test and there it is. So heal the gut to heal the deficiencies. So sometimes we need that support. And I, I one caveat, I do think you're right. Maybe it's not that it's more the insurance, but a lot of this stuff for people listening, insurance is not going to cover it because they're, they're not going to touch preventative stuff. And it's just, it's, just, it's part of what their business model is. It's, I think it's wrong. It's sad, but that's why we sit here and talk about different avenues to increase your health. And that's all we want really people to do is find these different avenues, find different supplements where they might not be efficient at, but get them more efficient at. And along those lines, what are, so you have a whole line of supplements, you yeah. got turmeric, what else do you have? So I made a formula called turmeric gold. That's my classic formula. It's like our flagship. Everyone gets turmeric gold. It's like a powerful daily preventive. And then I developed a second formula called inflammation relief, where that one has all the herbs from India and Ayurveda that approach inflammation. So when someone tells me, oh, I'm inflamed, I have this, I'm like, why don't you take inflammation relief? And if you need more support, take turmeric gold. So all of our chronic joint pain patients, people who are losing function in their hands, whose backs hurt, knees, hips, all those things, they take both together. And we call that the pain solution bundle. And it's the orthopedic surgeons who recommend my products who combine them. I never thought to combine them together like that, but they did it and it worked. And so that's our solution there. And then I realized if people aren't going to sleep well, they're not going to clear their inflammation. They're never going to win. We'll be chasing our tails. So I developed a sleep tea and a sleep gummy because I was like, let me fix your sleep so that at least you're winning through the night for the morning and for your daytime. So I have those and I'm, I'm very obsessed with sleep for recovery. Like anytime I don't sleep perfectly, I'm like, dang it, I lost the opportunity. So I'm pretty obsessed with sleep. And then from there, I developed other gummies and other teas. So like whatever someone has a problem, I'm like, what's the issue? And how can I use herbs and spices from Ayurveda? And, and I want to develop teas and see, can a tea be as strong and potent as a supplement? And so I only develop teas if I know that I can directly give that result using plants in their whole and open form. So I have one for menopause, one for stress and anxiety and things like that. And on that, what have you found for teas? Because I've, I like tea and I don't, 
I don't really like your traditional like Earl Grey or black tea. I like what you say, like the herbal teas. Like that's what I gravitate to when I go in the store. Yeah. So the the potency que- question is really like how potent are these things? Because I do like I love there's I think there's one company I tried. It was turmeric tea, but I'll have to. Do you have a turmeric tea? I am not making a turmeric tea because <laughs> when I give you curcumin at 500 mm-hmm. milligrams dosage, I actually have such a potent curcumin. I need it to land at the dosage. And okay. here at the West, like I'm one of those people who's like a teaspoon and a half is fine. If a teaspoon's good, a teaspoon and a half is better. And I can't have people messing around with dosing like that. It would be dangerous in my opinion, because turmeric is a vasodilator. It does, you know, it, it can act like a blood thinner. It does increase blood flow in the body. And so I won't do a turmeric tea with curcumin because it's too. Gotcha. Like, you know what I mean? You could be giving yourself three pills at once. And and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that because I wouldn't have control then. So you'd have to bigger the dose if you want a tea than your pill. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to either dumb it down, which mm-hmm. I'm not going to do. Um, so I just can't, I can't do something unless I know I'm delivering yeah. the exact result that I desire. So you're, you're, Going back to that turmeric pill, like it, with all those, not when see side effects, those effects you mentioned, someone could almost take that like almost pre-workout and use that as a pre-workout Yeah. with all that you mentioned. And I'm sitting here like, okay, all these, you have plethora of benefits, but then you have the performance side of things. It's like, you don't need the crap that's you know stimulated on the shelves. You just take something like that and get a natural effect at the right dose. Right. Boom. There you go. Yeah. And curcumin increases nitric oxide in the body. It does so much. So, you know, at this point I'm lifting heavier in my life and more consistently. So when I, the minute the workout's done, I'll take a turmeric golden inflammation relief and I'll drop that inflammation down, recover faster so I can go the next day. But we also have to remember inflammation has a good effect. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay attention to that as well. Like let the inflammation do its job and support yourself for your recovery, both. That's right. Well, I know we've been going for about 45 minutes. Anything else you want to touch on? Well, you asked me the question about teas and potency. So what's mm-hmm. interesting there is when you when I source for a tea, I source just like I source for a supplement. So I was just in India this year. I was just meeting with the suppliers. I was in Hyderabad. I was in Bombay, which is now Mumbai. Um, and when I was there, we were researching, they, they always laugh at me. They're like, you're the only person who shows up and asks us for more potency. They're like, most people show up here and try to drive us down on price. Well, you sit here and take your whole day and, and just try to pick our brains around what else, like I'm constantly trying to figure out how can I make a term of gold elite? Like, what does it take to increase that absorption even further? Um, but there's so much beautiful stuff happening in the world of Ayurveda botanicals, and science and so much new discovery has been made around the molecules. So when it came to deep sleep tea, I took ashwagandha, brummi, cardamom, osmanthus flower, chamomile, put all these things, fuse them together and the Ayurvedic herbs don't taste good. So I had to drop like 10 florals and some fruit in there all around it. So it would taste good (laughs) while I delivered the result. So it's interesting because teas are this open source of the fruit and the the flowers and the herbs. So it delivers a result really quickly, Mm -hmm. but I always have to make sure mouthfeel and taste is great too. Versus in a supplement, you can throw all of it in the veggie pill. No one's going to know how gross it is. That's right. And, and, for us, I assume you're the same way as I am. It doesn't matter what the taste is. If you know you're going to get a good <laughs> a benefit from it. I oh. mean, there's been times where I've done olive oil, turmeric, black pepper. It's just like, okay, it is what it is. But okay. I understand that the rest of society wants something that tastes good. Totally. So I I respect that for making a tea because I have had some, some teas that turmeric, ashwagandha or whatever that are, I mean, they're very potent. I don't mind them. I just say, Hey, it is what it is, but there is just a distinct taste. That's not bad. It's just, it's that taste of an herb. Yeah. I mean, I'm into my health enough that I can do a lot of gross things, but even (laughs) I have a line, like I have a line with fish oil because I'm vegetarian. Uh And so a lot of fish oils just make me so grossed out. And so finally my functional medicine doctor and I found one by Metagenics that doesn't give you fish burps that stay settled in and you can still drive a good result. So I I have to, even if we're in the health world, sometimes we have that line of like, Oh yeah. You know, 
Oh, there's, there's, I mean, trial and error with some of those comp- companies that were with that fish oil, you take it, especially the drinkable ones. And you're just like, Oof, and you can taste it. I mean, I've, I've tried most of these over the years and, and there's some more recent that are coming out and they're using different fish oils and like olive oil combinations that make it good. It, it really tastes good. And that's the beauty of the supplement world is it's growing so vastly in quality and in knowledge that you're getting people, not just back in the day, like, hey, we're going to put this product in a, in a bottle and sell it. And I've had somewhere it's just straight fish oil. And you're like, I just have to gag this down. Now it's like, hey, how can we put something in your cabinet to do this every single day so you can enjoy it? And when you take it, you also feel good about taking it. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, you. I think you, you have to enjoy it. I shouldn't say you have to enjoy it. I think it's important that as builders of products, we're, we're doing things in a way that will get compliance because otherwise right. we're not going to win anyway. Exactly. Like we, need, we need people to be willing to take what we create. So, so for your supplements, where can people find a, hey, where can people find you online and what, where can they find your supplements? Sure. So my website is my name, Shivani Gupta.com S H I V A N I G U P T A and all my socials at Dr. Shivani Gupta. And then the supplement company is fusionary formulas, F U S I O N A R Y formulas. And I made a special code for your audience. Think life fitness will give them 15% off on their order. Perfect. Well, we do appreciate you taking your time today. Um, coming on and talking everything about your kind of journey of looking at health and then diving into the supplement world of how to keep pushing that health bubble. If you're ready to make steps towards improving your health or increasing your performance, book a free 30-minute call today by visiting thinkfitnesslife.com.